Hello, it's Big Chad, back with another episode, another chapter of My Battles with Cancer, a candid patient and caregiver's memoir. I was a cancer patient, I'm a survivor, and I took care of my mother uh, when she was diagnosed with cancer, and so I was a caregiver, and I read about my experience in this book. It's available on Amazon, along with my other two books, Trading Quotes and Trading Wisdom, but I want this book to be free for anybody that could use it, anybody who's diagnosed with cancer or anybody who knows someone who's diagnosed with cancer. So I'm reading it one chapter at a time. That's what this is. I am, of course, <coughs> pardon me. I am, of course, Big Cheds on Twitter, Cheds Trading on YouTube. So where are we? We just did, uh, we're in the middle of the book. We just did everything I said was wrong. Um, we found out more about mom, that mom's, um, pardon me, found out that mom's cancer had spread. So train came off the tracks. Over the next couple of days, I tried my best to get back to a normal routine of work and spending time with family. Unfortunately, I was having a lot of trouble figuring out how to absorb everything that was going on with mom and my new role as a caregiver. Even though I did not realize it yet, deep down inside, I was battling feelings of depression. Hearing the news about my mom only having three to five years left to live was soul crushing. I did not know how to start processing those feelings because the idea of life without her was something so terrible that I could not bear to imagine it. As the father of a young child, I wanted my daughter to grow up knowing her grandmother. My siblings have children as well, so I'm sure they wanted the same for them. Coming into this whole escapade, I had planned a mom living for at least another 20 years, so hearing the news that her cancer had spread just crushed me. Three to five years is not a long time when you're talking about your own mother, your own flesh and blood, and the source of life, as she would often remind me. In early September, it was starting to get chilly outside, but it was still warm enough to go for a nice long walk so I could work some things out in my mind. Though I was in deep emotional distress, Physically, I was making some really good progress recovering from my knee surgery, and every day I was feeling more and more like myself on the outside. My hair was really starting to grow out, grow out too, and was even somewhat curly, which was fun because it had not been curly at all before the chemotherapy. In addition, the parts of my body that had lost hair due to radiation had mostly grown it back already as well. And along those lines, I continued to receive compliments from friends and family. And they told me that I looked well and I seemed to be recovering nicely from my treatments. In the middle of the week, after getting home from an extra long walk, I really needed to decompress. So I went to my man cave and I turned on some music. As the tunes played, I just sat there and cried realizing that the comfortable world I'd built up for myself was crumbling. Mom had a deathly serious fight on her hands, and the fact that I had given her such bad advice was absolutely demoralizing. And now we were paying the price for having underestimated just how dangerous her cancer really was. As I sat there in my man cave, I realized that I had been thinking a lot more about mortality lately, and specifically the fact that I will die one day, just as my mother will. After my initial cancer diagnosis, I started to think about death a lot more. However, after recovery, those thoughts quickly melted away into the background, only to be reawakened by the news that mom's cancer had spread. The gravity of the moment hit me like a freight train, and I was completely uncons inconsolable as I listened to my Baroque classical music. I was not just sad, but I was scared as well, and needing an escape from reality, I drank heavily that night. The following morning, 
I woke up with a bit of a hangover from the prior night's activities, and after drinking some water and some coffee, I gave mom a call. I was extremely pleased when I heard that she had slept well and was feeling quite, feeling pretty good herself otherwise. I wondered if perhaps she was just running on adrenaline as it almost seemed too good to be true. Mom reported that she was not experiencing any nausea and that gave me a lot of comfort because I did not want her to suffer while she was all alone at home. We talked a little more about how she was feeling and I reminded her that once she had gone through a few cycles of chemotherapy, she would get the hang of it just as the social worker had told us. I also told mom that it was that way for me as well. It took a few cycles for me to get into a rhythm of managing my side effects. At this point, we really didn't have any idea of how she would handle her side effects, and that was still a big unknown. From my experience, as well as from what I have heard from others, The worst of the nausea usually happens a few days after the actual treatment. So we would have to wait to see if that was true for mom as well. She told me that she was worried that her life would now be dominated by chemotherapy and that she would always be recovering, you know, one way or another, never able to get back to how she was before. I told her that it was true that she may never get back to how she was before, but I told her that if she could find a way to make, but I told her that she could find a way to make the best of it. If she moved with purpose and urgency, once she had recovered from the side effects of each cycle, she would be amazed at how much she could get accomplished before the next cycle began. Later that evening, I sat in my man cave once more, trying to figure everything out, and I was again completely overwhelmed with sadness. Flushed with an avalanche of emotion, I slowly sobbed and sniffled as I attempted to come to terms with everything that was going on and everything I was feeling. Rather than avoiding these challenging emotions, I decided to dive right in and let them wash through me, hoping to find some wisdom and understanding in the process. In my hour of need, I reached out to Twitter for some support and sympathy. Quote, turns out mom's cancer is worse than the doctors had originally thought. And now we are looking at stage four aggressive cancer that has metastasized. September 6th, 2018 at Big Cheds. Not going to lie, I'm pretty devastated. I feel desperate and helpless again, but only for the moment. The more difficult the challenge, the harder I fight. September 6th, 2018 at Big Cheds. There were some thoughtful responses from my followers, and they tried to cheer me up by offering me their well wishes, and I appreciate that. One message in particular really struck a chord. Quote, keep positive and strong for her. She'll need you through this tough journey. At Crypto Nas. Thanks, man. After allowing myself to marinate in the emotion for a while, I had a realization. It was critical to help mom by being there as a strong support net system, to by being there as strong support for her. I had to allow myself to first grieve and believe that I would then somehow rise to the task when ready. More or less, I could not allow myself to be miserable as mom still needed me. Being needed helped me from becoming completely absorbed with my own emotional state. On Saturday, I gave mom another call to check on her progress, and I felt a little guilty that I had not reached out to her earlier. She let me know that she was feeling a lot more normal now, and now that she had driven to the hospital to have that pump removed. Mom also proudly reported that she had weeded her garden and told me that doing that activity made her feel like her old self again. However, she reported that she was feeling nauseous and had taken some medicine to try to deal with those symptoms. Later that night, while I was back in my man cave, relaxing and decompressing, mom called me to ask for advice on 
how to deal with her nausea. I could just hear the extreme discomfort in her voice, and it really hurt me to know that she was suffering so badly. Mom was my hero, someone I looked up to and counted on, and it was not easy to hear her in such pain. I tried my best to listen, and I even offered to drive over and be with her if she needed. Despite the fact that she was in discomfort, she did not want me to come and visit her. She wanted to fight through the pain on her own. Over the course of the next few days, I returned to my normal routine of work and spending time with friends and family. In the back of my mind, I continued to toil with all these complex emotions that I was feeling. One thing that I kept coming back to was the idea that I had misjudged the severity of mom's cancer. Given that fact, perhaps I had misjudged the severity of my own cancer, and my worry was that I might be missing some obvious clues about my health and well-being. As a result of this thought process, I decided to check my body much more closely while showering. The following week, I caught up with mom again, just after she had driven to the hospital for for a follow-up CT scan. The goal of this scan was to determine how well her cancer was responding to the chemotherapy. We were both keen on finding out the result. Mom seemed to have a good vibe about her that day when she called, so I assumed that the scan must have gone just fine, even though it was still too early to know what the results were. Full of surprises, as always, mom told me a funny story about going into the hospital for the scan. After the procedure ended without any issues, she walked back to her car, and then she drove towards the exit ramp of the parking garage, where an attendant ran in front of her car and signaled for her to stop. Mom's immediate thought was that the results of the scan were so bad that they had to tell her before she left the building, and she went into a state of complete panic. Compounding her panic, the the attendant told her that a nurse needed to talk to her right away, so mom parked the car and hurried back inside. As mom rushed back to the hospital suite where she had that scan, she continued to freak out that the cancer had progressed. Did she have even less time to live? Walking through the door to the scan room and expecting the worst, the nurse greeted mom with a smile. She let her know that she had left her cell phone there. Mom was relieved and she felt like she had really dodged a bullet, remarking that she could not believe just how worked up she had gotten. Mom also told me a little bit of good news from her most recent meeting with the medical oncologist. The doctor said that there was some indication that her type of cancer might respond to immunotherapy. Though it was too soon to tell, it appeared that some treatment, additional treatment options might be available down the road. So we decided to finish the conversation on that positive note. And I was happy to see that she seemed okay, all things considered. A few weeks later, on a late fall evening, I was hanging out with some of my best friends to watch a big football game, and that had been something of a tradition for us over the years. About halfway through the match, we received a phone call from another one of our friends who usually joins us, but he was not there that day, and that was strange. He let us know that he had some horrible news. His mother had died unexpectedly the night before, and he was on his way back home to be with the rest of his family. We all tried to comfort him as best as we could, but really, nobody knew what to say. About 20 minutes or so later, he called back to tell us a crazy story about almost getting into a fight with some random guy on the side of the highway. As my friend was driving along the freeway to see his family, another car cut him off, so he sped up to give this guy a piece of his mind. After he caught up with the other driver and rolled down his window, both of the drivers went back and forth, yelling and pointing fingers until they pulled off to the side of the road 
to continue their dispute. Once they were pulled over, my friend got out of his car and walked over to the driver's side window to confront that driver. After back and forth about who was at fault, my friend told the other driver not to test him because his mother had just died and he was ready to flip out. The other driver quickly apologized and offered his condolences. And immediately the situation was diffused with both of the drivers leaving peacefully. After hearing this story, I knew just how stressed out my friend was, and I insisted that he stop by and chill out with us for a little bit. He showed up about 30 minutes later, and we were all happy he made it because we knew what a tough time he was going through. As we relaxed and watched the game, I studied my friend closely to see what it was like to lose a parent as He was the first one of my friends to go through that as an adult. I thought about my mom's health and how much I worried about her, and I wondered what it would be like if she passed away, just as my friend's mother had. My conclusion was that he was incredibly strong, and he was not showing as much outward emotion as I imagined that I might have if my mother did not make it. The next day, I took another long walk to stretch my legs. Walking through town and seeing other people, I realized that I had been spending too much time inside, and I really needed to get outside to be with my fellow citizens. When you spend all that time indoors, it's easy to become depressed and to feel disconnected from the rest of the world. It's really important to try to counteract that with social interaction. Without a doubt, I was incredibly depressed from the news about mom's health. I knew that I needed to fight through this malaise by staying as physically and emotionally healthy as possible, with the latter requiring a good dose of social interaction. This is my battles with cancer. Next chapter will be palliative care team. My battles with cancer, a patient and caregiver's candid memoir. I published this in 2020, republished it last year. It is available on Amazon in uh, Kindle, audiobook, and paperback, along with my other two titles, Trading Quotes and Trading Wisdom. You may know me from there. I am at Big Cheds on Twitter, Cheds Trading on YouTube. I'm reading this book for free. I want the whole book to be, I want it to be out there. I really is the whole point of why I did it is I want it to help people, so That's why I'm doing this. I am happy that you're here, here, and I thank you for being here, and I will be back soon. Take care.